An image search online helped me find these front elevations for several cool looking buildings. I limited my search to larger size files whose details would hold up when I scaled these to fit on 8.5 by 11 inch paper. I'm using Pages on my MacBook, but I think you could do this in a lot of different programs like Microsoft Word or even Google Docs. O-scale trains are in 148th scale, which translates to one quarter of an inch equaling one foot in the real world. A single story of a residential home is probably 9 to 10 feet in height if you consider about a foot for floor joists and then an interior room height of between 8 or 9 feet. So in 148th scale, 10 feet would only be about 2 and a half inches. I'm imagining these buildings as having grander dimensions, with interior room heights of between 10 to 12 feet. So each story equals to about three or three and a half inches in O scale. Because these images are computer generated, it's very easy to cut them apart and glue the overlapping edge of one to another to create both wider and taller buildings. For now, I'll use these as background filler pieces on my layout with three-dimensional buildings placed in front of them. I may also use them as backdrops for when I photograph some of my finished train projects or possibly 1 43rd scale die-cast model reviews. I'm working on a way to illuminate some of the windows from behind, but I haven't fully figured that out yet. Some working wall-mounted exterior light fixtures are also in the works, as well as striped canopies that will overhang several doorways. But that's for a future video. <laughs> Spray both the paper and the backer board to ensure good adhesion. Black foam core works really well because it's stiff but easy to cut. And the solid black color all the way through can just pass as deep shadows on the exposed edges. just be straight cuts. There are some ornamental finials above the balusters, but I won't need them. I could even trim the top lower if I didn't want the balusters at all, but for now they'll stay. Before I cut the sides though, I'll come along with a black sharpie to outline the edges just a little bit. This way I won't have to cut around each individual limestone block. My sharpie is a little dried out, so the work goes even more slowly, but it'll be worth it when it comes time for the knife. Sharpie and these will look just fine. 
from a distance or as a photographic background, they should be fairly convincing. Most of these buildings are pretty similar, and my method for hiding the white edges changed just a little bit as I went along. For this two-level storefront, it was easier to cut the sides straight and then come back with the black sharpie afterwards. This will likely be one of the buildings that gets a few striped awnings over the doorways. Because of the repeating nature of the windows or doors, it's actually really easy to glue several overlapping images together to make either really tall or very wide buildings. The size of your foam core or other backing material is really the only limitation. Like many of my projects, I'm motivated by keeping costs low. These apartment buildings or storefronts are an affordable way to fill space on a layout. If I were to just glue these to a back wall behind track or three-dimensional buildings, I could just stop right here. But I want to retain the option of being able to move these around. To do that, I'll just attach these wooden pieces to the backs with a hot glue gun. Now I can rearrange them and even use them as photographic backgrounds for some of my train projects or diecast vehicle reviews. I thought about painting the wood black but it's really not visible from the main viewing angles. So in keeping with this project's theme of low budget and low effort, I'm going to just leave them unpainted for now. Well, I think you get the general idea. It's kind of hard to stop with just one or two. And once I saw how easy and quick this could go, I ended up making five of these. Now, let me show you how they can look on a layout. Mm -hmm. 